happens if you take creatine for seven days? Let me explain. Recently, I've been hitting the gym more often than usual, but I've not been making as much progress as I would like. Adding to this, I've been recovering too slow. I thought, what would happen if I gave it my all and really pushed myself for just seven days? Because whatever you want, you can achieve, right? Well, it's not always that easy. Being a skinny guy, this was always a struggle for me since I was built like the tip of a peanut pencil. Last five months of my training, I asked many PT people and friends how to get bigger. They all gave me the same advice. Just eat more, dude. Just up your calories, dude. Which is easier said than done. Until I discovered a little friend called Anabolic Steroid. No, I'm kidding. Don't, don't. Please don't take steroids. I care about your health. A little supplement named Creed. At first, I had heard many myths about this, such as liver problem, balding, and even down below issues. Turns out, they're all myths. But I wanted to hop on creatine after one of the guys at my gym said, Yusuf, listen, man. I think you should hop on. We're all on it. Exactly what I'm going to be doing for the next seven days. I will be taking 7.5 milligrams of creatine every day. Also going to be training failure with the goal of increasing strength and appearance to see if creatine can work in just seven days. For the next seven days, will I become bigger or will I stay the same with creatine? Day one, I didn't really know what to expect with creatine. Didn't know it tastes, didn't know it felt. For some reason, the first time I took it, puff came out my mouth like I just snorted a whole fucking line of coke. I just took it and when I coughed and burped, it came out my mouth like a fart. It went down. I could feel it in my stomach for a while, maybe a good five minutes. It was taking longer to digest than most normal things. This was still about to change my body. Oh my god, I'm like sick feeling after all that. Now, apparently, this is meant to help with your endurance, your know, helps memory retention, focus, endurance, and recovery. So, day one, I decided to do arms because I don't really get to do arms that much, and my arms are not the fucking biggest. But I also wanted to mix in calisthenics with it because I wanted to look better overall because I felt like arms was the best way to go because my arms are pretty puny. Like, I'm like. <sighs> My arms are not the biggest. I don't know why they look big today. <laughs> I wanted to work on arms first, so I felt this was the best way to go through day one. Now, at first, my arms were feeling pretty normal. It was just feeling like a normal workout. I wasn't noticing too much of a difference, but something I'd done later on, which actually helped with my overall performance and training to failure, which is what I'll come to in a video later, actually helped this. Four hours after I took the pills, I did not feel as tired after this workout as I normally would. I'd probably work out for about 45 minutes to an hour. I would normally feel kind of tired, you know, kind of exhausted. For some reason, and this was only one day on creatine, I did not feel tired. I just didn't. Okay, surely this didn't just work this fast because I might as be on steroids at this point. Now, the more dips I done, I noticed my triceps began to feel more tense and more big. Actually, surprisingly, when I used to do tricep pull down, it didn't make too much of a difference. But after I had taken the creatine for about six to seven days, I noticed it began to get bigger. Next one I done for this split was bicep curls because I felt like, you know, we needed some biceps and then we need some curls. And biceps is one of my weakest points. My bicep, for some reason, my genetics just don't grow, but my chest grows absolutely huge. Biceps was always a struggle for me. So I really wanted to work on this with creatine. Just trying to push myself to failure right at the end but every time i got to failure i think the hardest part is mentally pushing yourself to push over when you're on the last one and you know you can keep going but you can just let go at the same time that is the hardest part to get through and this is where we need to mentally discipline ourselves and keep going when you want to get that strength when you want to keep going when you want to hit that next achievement when you hit, hit that next pr you want to move up in your weight it's always about hitting failure it's always about training to the most you can no matter how you're feeling on that day and that's the fucking hard this part because you gotta train to that failure you gotta get that fucking failure but to get failure it's not always easy so throughout this challenge i was on a diet of about six eggs and free toast at least every day on top of that about two wraps with chicken i then decided to get a bit dirty but you know who, who doesn't like getting a bit dirty i then moved on to a pack of percy pigs okay i might be cheating a little bit okay i'm gonna cheat a little just a little bit you know it's okay. Pull out some Percy You know, I need those fucking extra calories. Percy's getting in my pain. Now, I know I needed it because he had to be getting in those extra calories. I was aiming for about 3,000 to 4,000 a day. It's really hard to get in food. It's really hard to get in calories and protein consistently because getting in those extra calories can literally mentally times be a challenge. Not only physically, but mentally as well. Putting down food that is just not wanting to go down. That's why I would say bulking is a harder physical activity, but cutting is a mental activity. No, as well. Well, not only just people who are bulking or go to the gym, but people with eating disorders as well. It's not an easy thing to go through. Now, having to eat a diet full of protein is pretty hard. It's not an easy thing. Anyone who goes to the gym should be proud of yourself because it's not an easy thing. 
out. The thing is with day two, it's more of a thing where you guys won't be able to see it, but I can feel it. I already feel even now. I'm still on creatine and it's been nine days. I can feel my muscle more tense. Five minutes ago, I showed you my bicep and it was super tense. It's normally not like that. When you think about it, you're pushing your bone to break slightly, breaking the fibers slightly, then pushing them back into place with food and protein to rebuild muscle. You can say the same thing about your brain as well. You know, you break to rebuild. You fail to succeed. You you have to break because if you don't break, you can't push forward. When you're trying to get there, it's hard. It's not meant to be an easy thing. No one says it's comfortable going to the gym, working your ass off to your bone. No one says it's fun. It's just necessary. You gotta break your mentality and rebuild it, right? Because how else are you gonna rebuild? One thing I would say was very, very handy for me was having creatine there in a tablet form. Now, this is very useful for people who are continuously doing things because it doesn't mean you have to drink it all day. You can just take it like a pill. So coming from work and going to the gym, this option of creatine made this very, very good for me. And that's exactly what I've done on day two, where I came straight from work, went straight to the gym. And on day two, we hit back. Oh, I'm not a huge fan of back. I do love the way my back looks though after. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not a massive fan of it because back can be pretty painful when you're not in the mood like back is one of those things where it's like you either want to do it or you don't want to do it at all and when you don't want to do it at all you have to force yourself to do it because you know who doesn't want a big back I also found that my back became a lot more bigger and it literally shaped into the way I wanted it. I always tried to get that physique of the Dorito shape. I could never properly get it until I started taking creatine. It just intensified my whole back and it developed so much. The same with shoulders, which I'll then get onto later. With day two as well, my back looked fucking amazing. My back normally did not look this good and I would really work on it. Another thing which really helped was, was really pushing myself on the back part when I was doing pull-ups, but I was mainly focused focusing on the back. Now I could never get that lower back that all the other guys had and this kind of made me feel a bit ashamed almost and that really pissed me off. What I had to do was get rid of the fat because when I was younger I generally was kind of a chubby kid and sometimes a lot of us can genuinely be a bit chubby. After that I became a lot skinnier. But that's when I started to get the jokes about being skinny, anorexic but they're not always a bad thing. Now a lot of people see these things as you know a negative, it's unfair, it's mean, it's bully, which it is. What I would use is I would use this as a motivation because if, if people don't hate you then you're not doing it right and I will say that all the time if you don't have people shitting on you because you need those people there's always going to be positives and negatives when you run into a problem what do you do you solve it and I would say these two alone are not easy things to do because back is one of the most underdeveloped things on your body because when do we actually use our back apart from the gym we don't use our back too much after I had finished my last back workout, I sat there and when I looked in the mirror, I was like, holy shit, my back is so much more tense. Just that feeling alone is a really nice feeling. When we do constantly go for battles and struggles, accomplishment does feel good and it's satisfying and it feels really nice. But the problem is when we get too comfortable, when we've hit what we want then we get comfortable, then we slack behind. And I'm guilty for this as well. We, As soon as we finish a goal, we should be putting another goal in place. Things with like depression or sadness or emptiness. To get out of that feeling, you need to outrun it. That's my philosophy of it. You need to outrun it. By doing so much at the gym and constantly going, it struggles to catch me. And this is where we get to day three. Now check, I already had the upper advantage. I'm not gonna lie, my chest genetics are pretty good. I literally got tits, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Like one of my friends, she was like, yo, you could probably fit a bra on that. And <laughs> And with chest, I already do consistent push-ups a lot. I tried to do about 50 to 100 push-ups a day. By doing this many push-ups, my chest was already going to be even more developed. So we started off with dumbbell incline. Recently, I feel like I wasn't pushing myself enough on this. I feel like you could say that about a lot of weights. A lot of the time, we go for the easier weights because, you know, anything easier, it feels more comfortable. And we still get that bit of a pump and that bit of, you know, endurance on our muscle. That's not what we should be feeling good about. If you're not being better than you were yesterday, What's the point of trying? Dumbbell incline, I was lifting about 30 to 32 kg on my chest, which isn't huge compared to a lot of people. Before that, I was doing about 28 and 26. And as soon as I done 30 and 32, this was a couple days after, I was like, oh shit, I can do it. Now, at first I made myself think it was a creatine, but of course it was not the creatine. It was generally just the way I was thinking. Because in that moment, the whole time, I could have been doing that before I took creatine. And I could have probably had the capability of lifting that much. And that's the problem when we don't try hard enough.
So I've done this for about three sets. I normally do all my sets for about three times and then all to failure for about one to five because I wanted to build for strength, not endurance. So I also done peg fly, but for some reason when I was doing peg fly, I could lift a lot. I was doing about 100 and 114 kg. I was kind of a bit shocked to myself how I was doing that. Now, maybe I was just thinking in a different way, but this kind of goes back again to the idea of I started to think differently. I started to perform better. And with this mindset, I just went fucking crazy. I don't know how I started hitting these lifts. Even now, I've changed my whole mindset and how I look at the gym. Why would you not try and give it your bet every single time you try? Because why wouldn't I? I could die tomorrow. I could die in the next month. I could die next year. You never know when your time is coming. So why not give it your all? Why not give it your best? So don't, don't ever settle for life. Don't ever do that. For the last one on chest, I went for upper chest or just kind of just going down in the upper chest because I wanted to work my chest fully. Afterward, once again, my pump was crazy. My chest felt more bigger. My upper chest, my lower chest, everything on my chest felt bigger. It felt more tense and I liked that a lot. Now, day four is all about the shoulders. Shoulders were actually a weakness for me, the same as bicep. Shoulders as well, I started pushing myself more because I was on creatine. Straight away, I noticed my shoulders, they looked more tense, they looked better. I wasn't doing this before, and that was the issue. One place I really struggled to grow shoulders a lot was the rear delt. And I think a lot of people generally struggle with that because it's really hard to get this and make a contraction between it. So once I got the rear delt down, it really helped because I started doing my sets a lot slower. By doing my sets a lot slower and taking longer rest times, I realized that everything just became a lot better and even my growth and my body and recovery in general because every time I was doing a set I'd probably rest for at least two minutes ideally I would recommend three lateral raises were very good for me shoulder press I didn't really want to use the actual weights for shoulder press because I couldn't feel like I'd go to failure so noticed as well it didn't hurt as much going back to the idea of biceps earlier it wasn't feeling as hard maybe I was creating a placebo in my head I generally felt like because I was able to recover so fast I felt like I was able to pull it down faster when I would do shoulders, do them more consistently, it made my waist look smaller, which I really liked because my upper body was bit getting bigger. The same in my back and lat. When the back and the shoulders get bigger, it makes your waist look tinier, so it gives you that kind of nice look. You know, sometimes we always talk about how we want our body to look, how we want this perfection, but we always aim for perfection. We shouldn't be aiming for perfection because nobody's perfect. You're not perfect, I'm not perfect, no one in your family's perfect, none of your friends are perfect. It's just about trying your best. If you're trying your best, if you're putting in the work, if you're disciplining yourself, whether it's music, whether it's the gym, social media, whether it's YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, whatever you want to do, do it and do it like you've been doing it your whole life. I want you to come away from this video and understand that I made this video because one, I, I'm generally evolving with my content and I know I'm a good content creator. I've not been putting it the, the direction I want to. and now I am. I'm taking control of what I want. I want you to do that too. And speaking of doing it, we get on to calisthenics. Now, this one can be a bit of a tricky one for people because some people hate it, some people like it. I don't mind it. I'm a bit in the middle, you know. I enjoy calisthenics because of how it makes my body look. I like being able to lift my own weight and I like doing things like gymnastics, these type of sports. And I feel like these really help with those type of things. So I feel like it really just depends on your lifestyle and what you're equated to. Like if you were a rugby player, you're gonna most likely want to be bigger, right? Whether as a football player needs to be more skinnier because you need to eat faster. Everyone has their own goals. Everyone has their own diet. Calisthenics really helped in my overall performance in lifting weight and lifting anything in general. When I was doing weights, I first, <laughs> when I first done calisthenics, I actually didn't even have a belt. I used to literally use my fucking back. So I just had to make use of what was around me. Sometimes we might not have everything we want, but we have to work with what we have. If you don't have a lot of money, if you don't have the best wealth, if you don't have the best things, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to cry about it? Are you going to be sad about it? Or are you going to work to improve that? I'll tell you something. This is generally embarrassing. I never used to be able to do a pull up. I never used to be able to do a dip. I couldn't do one push up. So the point I'm trying to make, you don't need to look at everyone else around. You just need to start because having a starting point helps you get to the finishing point. If I could never do a push up and now I can do like 100 a day, 200 a day, you see something that feels threatening to you or you feel like can't do it, you can. You just need to try hard enough we get to day six. So day six was a bit of a weird one because I was in between doing legs and abs and cardio. I didn't do legs in this challenge. I really should have, to be honest. I'm not gonna lie because no, I skipped out on something. And there is me being guilty for something again. There's me taking ownership. Like I said, I'm just as guilty sometimes. I didn't do legs in this challenge because the fact is I don't like legs that much, but I should, I should be doing it. And I should discipline myself into it. That's why as soon as I finished this challenge, I looked over at this video and I said, 
fuck. I could have done that, but I didn't. I was fucking avoiding it. So as soon as I finished that video, I went straight to the gym and I said, fuck it, we're hitting like. Because I knew I was disappointed in myself. And I didn't want to psychologically think, my, make myself think, fuck, oh, it's fine, it was just like. Oh, it's not fine because I didn't do it. But like I'm saying again, we're not all perfect. But as long as you're trying, you're doing well. Because time can't be taken back. But what we can take back is our future. And you decide whether that changes or not. What's really been working for me recently was the ab machine and I never really used it before. What I had noticed with this was it was actually starting to work when I was starting to do abs slower. I would also do sit up. I would also do ones where you hold onto the bars and like you lift your legs up just to try to work the bottom abs. I would do plank as well. On top of this, I would do cardio. Now, I would say a lot of us avoid cardio. Me personally, I enjoy cardio. You know, cardio is very important for our health and I feel like not enough of us do it. You do feel really good after you do cardio all the fucking time. Every time I'm like, oh, I can't be bothered doing cardio. But as soon as I do it, I always feel better. You know, when I'm going into the gym and I'm about to get on the treadmill, and I'm like, all right, fuck, here we go. And I do a mile, two mile, I'm like, fuck. I'm in my zone and I'm doing it and I'm thinking about videos I'm gonna plan, videos I'm gonna do. Cardio actually helps that. It helps me remain focused. I wouldn't notice a difference with creatine on cardio as you know, you wouldn't really expect that. And if I did, I'd probably think I was dying. But <laughs> throughout this whole challenge, I would say, well, my conclusion of creatine on seven days, now being on it for over about 20 days, creatine has made my muscles more tense. Creatine has now enhanced my muscles and my strength after about 20 days. It was more just being able to hold more, recover faster. That's why I was able to do more. I didn't find really too many stomach problems apart from the first day. And that first day when my stomach was hurting, you know, that was fucking bad. But after that, I wasn't really finding stomach issues. I would say it is hard if you kind of don't like swallowing big pills. I wouldn't advise the pills, probably go for the powder. And you want to take creatine and your mom's not letting, please show her this video. Creatine is just a water substance. It goes into your muscles. It makes your muscles more tense from working out. It's not, it's not anything crazy. It's not a steroid. It's just a drug that that helps you build more muscle. But please, please, please make sure you're drinking a lot of liquid and make sure you are training a lot. I would say overall, it's very safe. It, it is really good for my performance. It's literally you versus you all the time. If you are feeling insecure about your body or insecure about anything, just remind yourself what you're doing this for, what your purpose is. Remind yourself why you're doing it. Remind yourself all the time why you're doing it. It's kind of my first ever proper big video of doing something like this. Let me tell you, it was pretty crazy. I've never done a video like this in my life, but I don't know how you guys are gonna respond to it. I really just wanted to convey a whole different amount of emotion for this video. This video is not just a video. Like this video is me as a whole. And the editing, the scripting, the storytelling everything is so much of me and i wanted to show it through the use of a youtube video that's what i am 